Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the flood switch on your dishwasher. It's a really easy repair. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we attempt this repair, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to the dishwasher. So if your model uses a cord on it, simply unplug it from the receptacle or locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker or remove the appropriate fuse, and then we can start the repair. So our first step will be to open that dishwasher up. We'll remove the bottom rack and any items that may be in it and set that aside. You may also find it helpful to remove that upper rack just to give yourself a little more room to work. To do that, we'll pull the rack all the way out. And just hold the rails in place. We'll unhook the rack stops, slide them off. Simply lift out on the little tab to release them. And then just slide it off the end of the track. We can then pull the upper rack completely out. Just push the rails back in out of the way and we can start our repair. If you wish, you can remove that lower spray arm. Simply locate that little locking nut underneath. Give it a little turn counterclockwise. Lift it off and just set that aside. Now next, we'll remove the fine filter. Again, we'll just turn that counterclockwise, lift it up out of the opening and set it aside. We'll also want to remove the coarse filter. So we need to remove these two retaining screws at the back. Just turn them counterclockwise to release them. And we can lift that filter assembly off the top of the pump. And again, just set it aside. Next, we have the filter adapter. It just fits down into that opening. Simply lift it up and remove it. And that gives us access to a mounting bracket located at the bottom of that sump area. And it's held in place with two quarter inch hex head screws. So we'll need to remove those next. So the two screws that are holding that bottom mounting bracket in place, there's one located straight to the back and another one located up towards the front. They're both quarter inch hex head screws and we'll need to remove those first to lift out that bracket. Now with the screws removed, we'll take a pair of needle nose pliers and just grip one of the fins on that bracket and pull it straight up. And just lift that completely off of the floats assembly. Now we can grasp that float switch and just rock it gently. It fits down into an opening in the bottom of that sump area, but there is a harness attached to it, so we don't want to pull up too hard on it. You'll see the harness attached to the bottom. And you'll also note a locking tab on one side. One side is flat, the other has a little locking tab on it. So we want to release that locking tab with one hand, but we don't want to let go of that harness. We'll simply press the locking tab down and pull the harness off the bottom. Just make sure it doesn't go back down through the opening in the bottom. Now we'll take the old float assembly and discard it. Now take note of the new one. Make sure that this O-ring is located on the bottom. And also make sure that the original O-ring came out with the part and it's not stuck down in that opening. If so, you'll need to pull that out. And you want to clean that area up. Make sure there's no debris in there then just moisten this O-ring. We'll line up the harness connector to make sure that the tab is lined up in the right place. Grip the harness. Make sure it's pressed firmly on. And then we're just going to push that whole assembly down into that opening. Just rock it back and forth until it bottoms out. We next need to put that bottom bracket in to make sure that the screw holes line up We'll fit that flat side into that opening. Let it drop right to the bottom. And using a magnetic screwdriver, we'll reinstall those quarter inch hex head screws. We're now ready to put the upper filter adapter in place. Again, we'll line up that flat side first. 
Then we can put the coarse filter in. We'll reinstall the plastic mounting screws for that. Once we've tightened down both of those plastic retaining screws for that coarse filter, we'll line up the fine filter and turn clockwise till it locks in place. The two arrows on the coarse filter will line up with the two arrows on the outer housing of that fine filter. We can then replace the lower spray arm. Make sure we line up those four tabs with the opening on that manifold. And then just turn that locking nut an eighth of a turn clockwise, lock it in place, and now we're ready to put the racks back in. So we'll begin by putting the upper rack in place first, pull the rails completely out, and we'll line up the rear set of wheels on one side first, and then the opposite side. So just push the rack back out of the way. We we'll extend those rails so that we can get the rack stops back in place. Now when reinstalling the rack stops, we want to make sure that the side with the locking tab on it faces towards the center of the dishwasher tub. And we want to make sure that this larger portion of that housing goes out around the end of the rail. Just press it on until that locking tab snaps in place. Do the same for the opposite side. With them locked in place, we can push that upper rack into position, and now we'll get the lower rack in. Cut out portion is at the back, set it in the tub, and we can close the door up. With the racks reassembled in the dishwasher, our repair is complete.